Looking over the last four decades of thoroughbred racing in America, since those days when Secretariat captivated a nation in the 73 Triple Crown, one searches in vain for another horse who so captured the fancy of the public as Zenyatta. And here's Zenyatta! She's flawless! She's never lost! And here this weekend at Churchill Downs, in the crowning event of the Breeders' Cup, the undefeated six-year-old mare will be tested as she has never been tested before as she strives to remain unbeaten by winning her second consecutive Breeders' Cup Classic in her 20th and final lifetime start. Indeed, she is the aging Amazon being thrown into the ring against an eager gang of teenage wolves. This is simply poetry in motion. Very few horses in racing history have commanded a following as fiercely loyal, passionate, and even zealous as Zenyatta. Indeed, in such a way, she's a phenomenon nearly unique to the sport. Seattle Slough, undefeated through the Triple Crown of 77, had his day in the New York Sun and followers aplenty. As did that pair of dueling banjos named Ali Dar and Affirmed, and Sunday Silence and Easy Goer. Here's the finish of the Preakness, Sunday Silence and Easy Goer, photo finish! The Philly personal ensign, undefeated in 13 starts, had her legion of vocal admirers. Personal engine, a dramatic finish! And of course, there was the great Cigar, whose popularity rose as he surged through 16 straight victories in 95 and 96. But none of these ever stirred the embers of passion quite like Zenyatta. How do you describe perfection? Why try? Let's just watch her run. This is Zenyatta. Alas, there are darters aplenty, too those who risked the open hostility of her followers by simply pointing out the obvious. Except in the Breeders' Cup Classic last year, Zenyatta has raced exclusively against females, has never run on a dirt track east of the Mississippi, and all but two of her starts have been on synthetic surfaces in California. This year, cautiously campaigned, she steered clear of the boys and did not run against a single female who had won a grade one race. So, for many, the question looms, how good is Zenyatta? This is the classic promising to reveal who she really is. At a mile and a quarter on the dirt, America's championship distance and surface, and against the fastest males in the land, she will have every chance to put her most enduring stamp upon the sport, leaving it undefeated, invincible, horse of the year. Even, perhaps, as the greatest female racehorse of all time. This was the scene just moments ago, as today's show is brought to you with limited commercial interruption by Emirates Airline, Zenyatta making her way through that line of folks who just want to take it in. They just want to be witness to history, going from barn 41 onto the track here at Churchill Downs as jockey Mike Smith looks on and patiently awaits his partner. Glad you're with us here, Joe Tessitore, Randy Moss, Jerry Bailey, and the crew here in Louisville as the fans, you know they are going to erupt when she goes down that tunnel and gets to the paddock. Zenyatta, the six-year-old mare, the only female horse to win the Breeders' Cup Classic and trying to become the only horse in recorded modern history to remain undefeated in 20 career starts. The other horses have one designated Jefferson County Sheriff's Department officer to accompany them on the walk to the paddock. Zenyatta has three. I, I'm just amazed at how her day went. You know, horses typically stay in their stalls until race time. The groom goes in there and gets them ready. She's been out most of the day, and it's just, uh, it's amazing. I mean, uh, may maybe she just knows what the moment is. Well, Jerry, if there's anything I think we've learned about Zenyatta is it's on her terms. She does as she pleases, and really, we're just all witnesses to it. Sometimes Mike Smith, I think, thinks that he's just a witness to it. She knows where the finish line is. She knows what she wants. Yeah, you know, I was talking to close friends of mine and they said you really think she knows where the wire is and she knows that she's going to win when she's cutting it so close you know what i kind of think she does how many times have we heard that over the years you know horsemen that say that and and it, you just kind of sort of roll your eyes normally when you hear it but she's done it so often 
Now, whether she'll do it today, we'll see. One of her chief rivals is Blaine, trained by Al Stahl. Jay Privman is with Al. Thanks, Joe. Al, this is the best horse you've ever trained. This is the biggest race you've ever run in. What are your emotions right now? Well, I'm excited. This is fun. I'm a, I'm a horse racing guy, and this is what it's all about. We've worked a long time to get here, and we feel like we've got a, a good horse. He fits in with this group, so I'm just trying to enjoy myself and have fun. It's, it's up to him. It's up to him. As close as we get to the race, I get less involved. It's up to the jock and, and the horse, so it's fun. Now, you're going to be going up against uh, Zenyatta. Do you think you can beat her and be horse of the year? I think so. I mean, we love our horse. This is his home track. He's doing as good as he's ever done, so we're, we've got a lot of confidence. Al, good luck. As the sun sets here at Churchill and Zenyatta walks with her groom, Mario Espinoza, of course, Todd Pletcher has won three Breeders' Cup races over the past two days, and he puts forth a very strong contender in quality road, Janine. That's right, Joe. And, of course, Todd, after last year's experience with quality road in the Breeders' Cup, which was forgettable, I know you've been anxious to get him back here to the race this year. You've left no stone unturned in his preparation what have you seen from him this week, especially with his gate schooling? Oh, he's very good. He had a perfect uh, morning yesterday, walked right into the gate, which he's been doing every time. So we're pleased with that. I think, uh, you know, the crew here has done a very good job. They understand what we're looking for. And, uh, of course, I thought he had a super breeze over the track. Yes, he did. Now, in those final, final moments, just before he gets near the gate, what will you be watching for from him in terms of body language? Well, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd expect him to see him nice and relaxed and calm like he's been and hopefully just walk right in good luck Todd thank you Dale Romans the trainer has two runners here today patio Prado and first dude is with Steve Cyphers Dale uh, with patio Prado and first dude where do you want to see them at the half mile mark well, if everything goes the way it looks like on paper, first dude should be third or fourth, two or three links off the lead, and Patio Prado inching his way up, probably five or six links off at the half. All right, let's cut to the chase. How do you beat Zenyatta? For anybody to beat her today, they're going to have to step their game up and run the best race of their life. Is it possible? Anything's possible. That's why we're all here. Thank you. He has a couple of talented ones. As there she is, and she's already started with that front right, those dance moves <laughs> that she does, Zenyatta. Jay. Thanks, John. What's John Sheriffs? John, what are your emotions right now walking over for this huge race? Yeah. You know, I'm just really proud of Zenyatta, and I'm really happy to be here in the Breeders' Cup Classic this year. So we're just going to have some fun now. What does it mean to you to see the reaction as we're walking by here? There's people cheering. The, I mean, we're halfway around the clubhouse turn, and they're already starting to cheer for her. You know, that's been the reaction everywhere she's run. So, uh, you know, it just shows how much the fans really enjoy her. Have you given any thought to what this might mean after the race? This could be her last race. What it'll mean when she leaves your barn? You know, you know, we're not really thinking about that, Jay. It's that's too much really to think about. <laughs> so now we're kind of enjoying the moment, you know, and just uh, like being a fan of hers because all I have to do now is put the saddle on. Good luck, John. Well, she's passing right by our set right now in that blanket that they refer to on Big Zenyatta as the mini skirt. Some of the dance steps are playful, but it's also an expression of nervous energy. You saw Mario, her groom, try to shush some of the fans shh, as she was walking by to try to keep them from making too much noise. Moments ago, Mike Smith, as he knows, Zenyatta is making her way over. Looks up to the heavens, says a prayer before he goes out each and every time with her and puts on that teal cap the goggles in place and Zenyatta soon to arrive to him and the reception when she gets down past this clubhouse turn and hits that crowd is going to be sensational under the lights now here at Churchill Downs they took in the idea of having primetime racing a couple years ago they installed permanent lights in April of this past year and now Zenyatta will have her reception.
And so she has arrived, ready to be saddled in the paddock. And that was an interesting tour for Zenyatta through the tunnel as she continued her dance moves. And now the jocks will come out of the jockey's room, down the escalator to meet their mounts. And Mike Smith will be with Zenyatta for one last time. You saw Jerry and Ann Moss come into the paddock with their prized mare. And Ann Moss put the finger to the mouth asking the crowd to quiet down. And here comes Mike Smith. Already a Hall of Famer, the regular rider for Zenyatta since April 2008. John Sheriffs stands by the trainer, ready to saddle her, and we check in with our Jeremy Schaap. Joe, if it's true that behind every great man there's a great woman, it might also be true that behind every great mare there's a great trainer. In Zenyatta's case, of course, that trainer is John Sheriffs. And both Zenyatta and Sheriffs have taken an unconventional path to the pinnacle of their sport. Trainers wait their whole lives for a horse like Zenyatta to come along. Still, few have the patience sometimes required to mold a champion. In some hands, Zenyatta might have been rushed. In John Sheriff's, she was allowed to grow into greatness. It's a genius. The man, he just has a way. So patient, so laid back. I mean, he lets it come to him. He never pushes. You can never get beyond the fact that they're, that the horse is the most important thing. For Sheriff's, it's long been more about the ride than the result. He learned the value of slowing down as a young man, a Marine in Vietnam, he came home with no ambition other than to save her life. I think he definitely learned that life is special. I had a friend of mine that I met in the Marines, and he lived in California. He said, why don't you come out? We can go surfing and, uh, you know, see what happens. That trip changed Sheriff's life. He'd grown up around horses in New Hampshire, and in California, he found his calling and slowly built a reputation for training excellence. But it wasn't until five years ago, when he was nearly 60, that he truly broke through. To think our horse was going to run in the Kentucky Derby was, uh, it was just amazing. It was just uh, a feeling that's it's hard to describe. It's like a dream come true. Giacomo in the final stride to win Derby 131. I think for him, it was more the fact that in some way his name would be etched in the history of racing. And I think that's what meant a great deal to him. And then along comes Zenyatta. <laughs> Still, even when Zenyatta came along, sheriffs resisted the temptation to race her before she was ready. He bided his time, first racing her when she was nearly four. Sheriff's patience has been richly rewarded again and again. And here's Zenyatta! She's flawless! She's never just so much fun you put a lot of work into it right you put a lot a lot of work into it and to stand back and see everybody just uh, celebrating and all the happiness and joy at that moment you know it's it's fun to watch John Sheriff's the final touches on the saddle Pink saddlecloth number eight. Sheriff says she has an opportunity to achieve something unattainable. Gentlemen, the question now becomes who can beat her? This is a loaded field. Let's take a look at the five beyond Zenyatta. She is the star of the show, but there are others on stage with her, including Blaine, who has won two stakes races, major stakes, right here at Churchill Downs, and he's been training very well over this track. Her jockey, Jared Go Garrett Gomez, a son of a jockey, he's won over 3,400 races and 12 Breeders' Cup races. Two this weekend, he can catch fire. Quality Road, much earlier this year in the Don Handicap, ran perhaps the best race any thoroughbreds run in America all year long, but he has a bad post. Yeah, and ha has a great jockey. Johnny Velasquez has nine Blue Breeders' Cup races, including two this weekend. Looking at Lucky's actually the second betting choice right now, trained by Bob Baffert. He's won three in a row, including 
the Preakness and the Haskell. And Martin Garcia got his big break against Lucky. He, he rose to the occasion in the Preakness this year. The speed is always dangerous, especially lone speed. If Haynes Field can set the pace by himself, we saw what he can do when he won the Jockey Club Gold Cup. With a very patient Ramon Dominguez, he'll be going as easy as possible up front. And remember when Smarty Jones was beaten by Birdstone in the Belmonts? Birdstone was trained by Nick Zito. Could he be the spoiler with Flydown? Lake Brew doesn't hurt his chances. Mike has taken a leg up on Zenyatta. That crooked white blaze, such a familiar look. Zenyatta, she's so big, 1,200 pounds, 17 and a half hands. And for the call to the post, here we go. Cell phones out and the Z signs. Queen Z, they like to refer to Zenyatta as the queen of the racetrack. She has never lost 19 and 0 through the tunnel that so many have gone through on their way to history. Churchill Downs, truly the grand cathedral. A huge crowd that now will work its way from the paddock and fill in all against the rail. Of course, Millionaire's Row and the Jockey Club and the High Rise Grandstand and Clubhouse all filled up with seated patrons. Over 114,000 have come out over the two days of this Breeders' Cup, a record attendance for the Breeders' Cup. The post parade for the Breeders' Cup Classic is brought to you by Equibase, the Thoroughbred Industries official database for racing and wagering information as this classic will be run under the lights. The lights are on here at Churchill. And the number one in our post parade is Quality Road, who's owned by Ned Evans. His father owned the 1981 Derby winner, Pleasant Colony. Jockey Johnny Velasquez has had a good Breeders' Cup so far. Quality Road is 7-1. to one. The question for this fast and talented horse is will he get the distance? 0 for 2 at a mile and a quarter. Quality Road has speed, but the number two patio Prado expected to rally from off the pace. The last time he was at Churchill Downs, he was third in the Kentucky Derby, and he has the top Equibase speed figure. The jockey is Kent DeSormo. The three is Haynesfield, his sire Spitestown, was the winner of the 2004 Breeders' Cup Sprint. Haynesfield's running style to sprint out to the lead, trained by Steve Asmus. Like Patio Prado, the four first dude is a three-year-old. He was second in the Preakness, third in the Belmont, third in the Haskell, and third in the Travers. He is consistent, but it's been a long time between victories. Blame wears the green saddle cloth number five. Blame is five to one, currently third choice. Jockey Garrett Gomez has gone from being in an ambulance after a bad spill Thursday to potentially winning the biggest race of all. There's the Nick Zito trained fly down, number six, written by Julian Leperu, a Keeneland sales graduate. In his last start, he was third in the Jockey Club Gold Cup, only two lengths behind runner up Blaine. Musket Man is the number seven. He was only purchased for 15,000. A horse who just keeps showing up in the money. He's never finished worse than third in 14 career races. Let's see, who could this be? Zenyatta. You could hear the crowd as Zenyatta was introduced on the public address system. She is America's darling in the thoroughbred set, going for a perfect 20 for 20 and still dancing. John Sheriffs looks on with that smile. Now he just awaits as we all do. Nine is Pleasant Prince. Just knows doubt in the Florida Derby was Pleasant Prince. Joel Rosario has them out. Number 10 is etched. A winner of five of his last six starts. Trained by Kieran McLaughlin. Wearing the Godolphin blue. Ridden by Alan Garcia. And the 11. As we see looking at Lucky. 
behind Etch. There's the 11. Espoir City off on his own. A Japanese bred horse has never won the Breeders' Cup. Espoir City shipped in over the Pacific to try to change that. He is Japan's best dirt horse, having won six of his last seven. Many think the Japanese horse has not been training well, but looking at luck, he certainly has. He's the second choice right now at nine to two behind Zenyatta's four to five. Bob Baffert looking for his first Breeders' Cup Classic victory. Look at the flash bulbs. As the sun is setting here at Churchill, the lights are on. This is the first major day of North American horse racing that has ever been run in prime time with a classic, an American classic at a mile and a quarter. Yesterday, we had the Breeders' Cup, Philly Friday, but this, an American classic. Of course, the triple crown always on sun-drenched spring afternoons. And now the cold weather nearing prime time for Zenyatta. Our formulator fact has to do with looking at Lucky, specifically trainer Bob Baffert. You see that 40% win percentage in three years. Graded stakes races of longer than a mile. Looking at Lucky will be well prepared for this race. We'll see if he's good enough to take down Queen Z. Let's go to our handicapping set with Kenny and Hank. Well, Joe, not that my opinion matters much given my record today, but I had changed my mind even before that poetic entrance. You know, we can try to break it down and talk about moving from one surface to another or what quality of field she has faced or whatever. Sometimes, once in a lifetime, there's just a special thing that's better than the rest. I'm a little overwhelmed. i tell you why. And it's appropriate that we're in Louisville because the last time I saw an entrance into an arena like that was from Muhammad Ali by an athlete. The way she pranced, the way she knew where she was. If she was a football player, she would have been penalized for excessive, ex celebration. excessive celebration. But she deserves it, let's face it, 19 wins. Now, as far as the bet goes, with all of that, I like Blame. I think Blame, with seven out of 10 victories, three for five here at this racetrack, or three for four, excuse me, at this racetrack, is gonna get the trip. I think there's enough pace for him, which he's gonna like, and I'm putting him on top and fly down right behind, and Zenyatta closing, but not quite getting there. I hope you lose, Hank. Joe? <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Kenny, listen, I want to get your reaction to this, guys, because Hank touched on it there, and we know where he's going as a bet. But we have called triple crown attempts sitting at the Belmont with Big Brown and other major race days. We've been here for the Kentucky Derby. He said he was overwhelmed. This feels much different than a triple crown attempt because something has already been proven with her. She's now trying to become an all-time great. This atmosphere is very different here tonight. Yeah, this is more the icing on the cake. I mean, he knows the commodity the, that he has. I think he's just dependent on a little bit of racing luck. He's got the skill. I, I, I doubted last year whether she could weave her way through horses. I knew she couldn't circle a field and win, but Mike Smith was up to the task. He cut the corner when he needed to. Zenyatta was handy enough to maneuver between horses, and I think she he knows that she can do it this time. He's got the game plan, and I believe he's got the horse. Question is, can she run down blame? As she yeah. continues to dance with that front right, let's check in with Jay Privman. Joe, John Sheriff's walked through the tunnel right behind Zenyatta, and he just had the biggest smile on his face as he came through the tunnel. There were flash bulbs going off. He stood out on the track here watching her during the post parade, and there were some fans behind him that started chanting, Zenyatta, Zenyatta, and he turned around and acknowledged them, and now he's just staring at a screen and watching Zenyatta do her little dance, and he's just admiring it, as you can see, and he's standing right next to his foreman, Frank Leal. They've been together for a number of years, and they're going to take this race in together, this 20th race for Zenyatta. Joe? Hey, Mike, uh, how's she doing? Thanks, Ames. Mike Smith, how's your big mare doing? She's doing great, Jerry. She's a little anxious, but she's ready. Yeah, I, I noticed she might be a little bit more on edge than she has been in California, but all in all, well for you? Yes, I'm very happy. She's, uh, she's on edge, but she's not getting hot, Jerry. She's, she's still cool. Okay, how about Mike Smith? How you doing, my friend? <laughs> You know, now I'm comfortable, Jerry. Now I'm where I belong, so I feel a whole lot better. Do you kind of see it like I do, that you might have to take an edge here or there during this course of this race or maybe move a little early? I missed you, Jerry. I said, do you think you might have to take the edge again this time and kind of cut a corner here or there, make a little earlier, different move? Well, if we can get an edge, I'll sure take it. All right. God be with you. Thank take you, Take any edge that Amen. he can get. John Sheriff's six-year-old mayor, Zenyatta. 
with Mike Smith. Let's now, go to Nick Luck. Joe, I'm with Bob Baffert, who trains possibly the biggest danger to Zenyatta, looking at Lucky. Bob, in your many years in horse racing, have you ever seen anything like this? I've never seen a, this, is, this is a really awesome feeling. I mean, all these people uh, uh, rooting for one horse like this. And, you know, I, I can't blame him because she's such a great mare. And uh, there's a lot of good horse in here. But uh, it's going to be a great race. And I, if, this is great for the horse racing in America. I mean, what a great day. Is there something particularly special because it's Kentucky and it's the home of horse racing? I've never seen so many people in the paddock for a race, even more so than the, the Kentucky Derby. I mean, this is special. This is a historic race because, you know, we're watching uh, everybody in sports loves greatness. And we're about, you know, we saw Gold Dakota, which he did earlier. Was, you know, I get goosebumps when I saw that race. And, it, you know, even I have a, a, tough, a tough horse in here that uh, it just seems like even, even he, he's a Zenyatta fan, you know. So uh, I, I just hope he runs well. Bob, good luck yourself. It's all about the legacy. Joe. Thank you, Thank you Nick. This is a special moment, obviously, as, as Baffert pointed out. Everybody is pulling for Zenyatta, but I mean, here's what she faces. In the daily racing form today, eight of their 12 handicappers picked against Zenyatta. I picked against Zenyatta. Jerry Bailey picked against Zenyatta. Joe Tessitore picked against Zenyatta. She faces a very tough task here, even though she is 19 for 19, and we've been talking about her deservedly so. It's not a gimme. Here's what I believe. I may like looking at Lucky, others may like blame, but I believe she is going to be running hard like a freight train right to the wire to make this a very, very thrilling event. Everybody's quality Road, remember all the drama with Quality Road. Now wow. he goes in smooth as could be, as now we are getting closer here. Todd Fletcher's got to be relieved to see Quality Road go in like that. Zenyatta, four to five. And there is Haynesfield with Ramon Dominguez. Zenyatta's quest for perfection now only has a mile and a quarter to go. 11 male rivals primed to deny her as she goes in. Will she or won't she? Here comes the answer. Just enjoy the ride. So the moment of destiny has arrived for Zenyatta. Two left to load, Espoir City looking at Lucky. The huge crowd at Churchill Downs waits in anticipation. Are we going to see history? Zenyatta, 20 for 20, looking at Lucky's end. They're all set for the $5 million Breeders' Cup Classic. There's the roar from the Churchill Downs crowd as the field is set on the way and Zenyatta is dead last. Zenyatta was slow in the stride. She's got to be five, six lengths last as Zenyatta. They come past the stands first time round now and first dude is going on to lead Espoir City. Quality Road is right there on the inside and Hainesfield a close-up fifth. On the outside of that comes Etch. Here's looking at Lucky racing in the six spot. Seven off the lead as the pace very solid early. Blame is taken back towards the rear. On the outside of that, we have Piers and Prince. In behind those two now, we drop back to Paddy O'Prado, who's down at the rail. In tight was Fly Down, Musket Man is there, and Zen Yata is dead last. Mike Smith's asking her to pick it up a little, actually. Mike Smith doesn't want to be too far back. He's asking Zen Yata to pick it up. At this stage, Zen Yata's got to be a good 18, 20 lengths off the leader. They go down the back stretch now in the Breeders' Cup Classic and first dude is the leader. Quality Road has ridden along at the rail. Haynesfield right there third. Espoir City is fourth and those four fly 
It's a big gap of seven back to edge. Looking at Lucky as ten lengths off the leaders. Blaine down at the rail. In behind Blaine now we have Musket Man who's still far back with Paddy Prado. In behind that we have Fly Down and Zenyatta is dead last. Zenyatta is last. Mike Smith trying to find somewhere to run. They bunching up at the top of the lane now though. Hainesfield, Esquire City's running a huge one as well. Looking at Lucky. Here comes Looking at Lucky. Etched is in there. Zenyatta now hooking to the grandstand side. And Zenyatta is now coming with her run. Looking at Lucky. Blame. Blame on the inside. Blame gets the lead. Zenyatta on the outside. Looking at Lucky. Blame. Zenyatta. Zenyatta. Zenyatta is flying. Blame trying to hold on. Blame. Settle for second. Fly down was third, and looking at Lucky finished fourth. Well, there we have it. Ahead will separate a historic race from Zenyatta. Tremendous run, far, far back early. Had a wind her way through. Blaine got the perfect trip though, and Garrett Gomez scores ahead on Blaine. Zenyatta second. An utterly thrilling desperate run to the wire by Zenyatta, but Blame, Blame has now emerged as what many will say as the horse of the year. The, the one thing that I thought Mike and Zenyatta would run into is trying to pick his way through horses. Yes, she has an explosive run, but that small margin of error that he had to wait a, a time or two to find his way clear cost to the race. What a sensational run by Zenyatta, but we've seen so many times Zenyatta pull it out just at the last minute, but running against Switch and Renterville is different from running against Blame. She deserves all the credit in the world, though, for an amazing run. Hey, buddy. How you feeling? Mike, how you feeling? Michael? Yeah. You got any breath left? Uh, <laughs> I guess I got beat, huh, Jerry? Well, you know, I'm gonna tell you something. You gotta play the hand that's dealt you, and I thought you rode her brilliantly considering you really had no place to go. You only had to step, tap on the brake slightly a little bit, and you found a spot, but you just ran out of ground. Yeah. I'm a little bit devastated right now, Jerry. I'm, I'm trying to pull myself together. Huh? All right, buddy. Trying to pull himself together. Meanwhile, Garrett Gomez and Blame, and what a past three days it has been for Garrett Gomez on Thursday afternoon he went down in a bad spill and now he wins the Breeders Cup Classic Kate Garrett uh, this week the ups the downs tell me what's going through your mind right now you know I, uh, I don't even know I mean I can't I can't say enough about this horse um, you know I mean I struggled all day um, my shoulders pretty messed up and, um, you know, I mean, I, I stood for the last two hours just trying to make it feel better. And, um, you know, when I got out here, there was no pain. I mean, he, he made, it, made the pain go away, and I'm going to be glad to see him go, go, uh, go on and do another job. Thank you. Garrett, as uh, the race was unfolding, as you were making your move, did you realize what was happening in terms of Zenyatta and beating the Great Queen? Yeah, you know, I knew she'd be coming, and, and I knew she's, she's a, the best I've ever seen. Uh, um, you know, and, and, and I thought, actually, I thought about the eighth pole that I was going to get there pretty easy because she hadn't gotten to me at all, and all of a sudden, here she come. I, could, I caught her out of the corner of my eye, and I'm like, come on, Papa, let's go. Let's do a little farther. Come on, she's coming. And he just kept finding and digging, and, I mean, he just run unbelievable. Congratulations. Joe? Let's show you this finish one more time. What a thriller in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Blame just nosing out Zenyatta. Jay Pridman is with John Sheriffs. Thanks very much, Joe. John, can you describe your emotions right now? You know, I'm just so happy uh, with what, everything that Zenyatta's done, and she ran her heart out today. Ran a great race, and uh, congratulations to uh, Blame. Did you ever prepare yourself for her losing a race? Uh, you know, it, this is the first time it's happened. <laughs> so. 
What are you going to do? Horse racing. What about this reaction that the fans are giving her as she comes back? Oh, like that, you know, they, they were behind her, win or lose. So uh, I think I think she represented them very well and tried, you know, ran an excellent race and just came up a little short. John, thanks very much. And Janine is with Jerry Moss, Zenyatta's owner. Jerry and Ann, I watched you as you were watching the race. You both had the binoculars trained on her. Not a word was spoken as the horses entered the backstretch. Jerry, what were you thinking? Well, I thought she'd get there, but uh, she just missed, you know. So um, she lost to a really good horse, and uh, we're real proud of her. She tried hard, and uh, she's the greatest. What can I say? And how hard is you for is it for you to watch that, that photo finish again as we see it in slow motion? Well, I still hope she stuck her tongue out, you know, <laughs> it was that close. But it uh, doesn't take anything away from her. She's a great, great horse. And I just, uh, it's the first time she won't be in the winner's circle, so I'm, I'm wondering how she feels. And I know you guys don't know what to do either because it's the first time you haven't gone to the winner's circle either, but thanks for a great ride. John Sheriffs to go meet his mayor, Mike Smith. It's going to be very reflective about just an inch here or there, a move here or there, just one more stride, one more opening, and it could have been. But Blame is really a top-notch performer. What a season Blame put together. And you see Al Stahl Jr. at the top left of your screen there with his young uh, young son getting a lot of congratulations. What a, what a training job Al has done. And you know, all week long, for a long time, people have been wanting to compare Zenyatta to Secretariat. Would she eventually be regarded as a horse like Secretariat? Well, Blame is co-owned by Claiborne Farm, mm. which stood the great Secretariat at Stud, where Secretariat is buried in it. The story sort of comes around full circle. I, I think Randy and I both kind of wanted Zenyatta to win, but realistically looked at the circumstances, and it's circumstances that usually gets horses beat. And for her to try or weave her way again through these horses, unencumbered, it's the, the odds are just stacked against her. And I think that in and of itself is why she came up just a tad short. We both, the traffic she had to go through. We both picked Blame to beat her, and you almost feel guilty. I do. You know? but, but we both knew she'd be coming. Yeah. Was she ever coming? And for Garrett Gomez, who's up on Blame, his 13th Breeders' Cup win, his third win of these Breeders' Cups, the 27th edition of the World Championships. And you can see the purple and coral hues of the sunset to the west of Louisville. And the sun setting on the career of Zenyatta, thanks to Blame. And Mike Smith makes his way through the reporters and the crowd, his head down and dejected. Obviously, so much was built up. And you know, listen, they delivered every which way. They lost to the most loaded field you could lose to, a horse who will likely be horse of the year. And Blame, four for five here at Churchill Downs. But Zenyatta, for my money, is the greatest female racehorse of all time. I, I don't, I don't think there's too much doubt about that. Uh, Blame is a is an outstanding horse in his own right. Uh, but Zenyatta, if she loses anything in defeat, if, if if she loses what might have been a ranking among the very top horses of either sex of all time, she doesn't she doesn't lose much. She is with Mario Espinoza. Let's show you the stretch run one more time from the crowd's view at Churchill. Look at as they're cheering on, thinking she can get there. And once again, in super slow mo, Zenyatta and Blaine to the wire. How many times have we thought she's not going to get there? She's not going to get there. She always had in the past, but. And not, there not is your official photo of the photo finish. Blame on the inside, Zenyatta on the outside. It's, it's almost the same type of environment, feeling right now that we had after Smarty Jones lost the Belmont Stakes to Birdstone in 2004. You know? Congratulations to Blame. A great champion representing the Breeders' Cup. 
and a star here at Churchill Downs. And kudos to Zenyatta. She gave everything she had. When we come back, we will break down and analyze the start of this race. Jerry will have that. Look at that scene. Like a painting at sunset, dusk, as Churchill under the lights for this Breeders' Cup Classic, where Zenyatta has been defeated for the first time in her career. And it was Blame, who should go on to be Horse of the Year, bringing back 1240 over Zenyatta, fly down, ran third. And the trifecta paid 465. Hank Goldberg hit that trifecta if you were listening to the hammer. Let's go back to the beginning of this race, Jerry. And Zenyatta, although she drops back early, she got squeezed this time, which, which kind of squirted her out of the back another length or two. Now Mike Smith has her in hand, and now this is where she's going to be, but it cost her a little momentum. And she is further back in the earlier part of the race than she ever has been before. But make no mistake about it, she's, she's, she's trying to get into the race, and Mike is encouraging her. When he came around the first turn, I looked over, and he wasn't just dawdling around. He was encouraging her to get in the race. It just took her a while to feel her way through this different racetrack. Now, as they went through the middle portions of the race, you can see, as we thought, Blame had about a four or five length advantage. They're both finishing right now, going into the far turn and around that turn. Zenyatta and Mike Smith trying to pick his way through traffic. Blame has less horses to navigate through. His job is easier. Mike Smith rode a heck of a race, finding a way because he had another wall to go through than Garrett did. Now that Zenyatta's out in the clear, Blame still has about a three-length lead because of that tactical speed that he has. And she's coming hard, but she's trying to run down a very good horse. That was the finish, the thrilling, heart-stopping photo finish for the Classic. Let's go to the winner's circle and the presentation of the Breeders' Cup Classic Trophy. Joe, thanks so much. The culmination of an historic, dramatic 27th Breeders' Cup Championship. Some keepsakes for Claiborne Farms, the owners of Blame. We welcome Jan Patrick Schmitz, the CEO of Mont Blanc, to make a presentation. This was truly a moment where history was written. I congratulate you and presented you to mark this historic moment, the Mont Blanc Nicolas Riesek watch. Congratulations. Mr. Schmitz, thank you very much. We're also joined by Bill Farish, the chairman of the board of the Breeders' Cup, and by the governor of the state of Kentucky, Steve Bashir. Mr. Bashir, would you do the honors, please? I'll tell you what a great honor it is to watch a race like this, to watch history being made. To Garrett, what a great ride. Al, what great training. Adele, congratulations. But it's special for Kentucky governor to give this classic trophy to a great historic Kentucky farm, Claiborne Farm, Seth Hancock, congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Hancock, what does it mean to you to have Blame win tonight with the eyes of the sports world upon you? Well, it's, uh, it's really just a thrill beyond belief. It's something that you can't imagine. This is our 100th anniversary in the have a gift like this on our 100th, it's pretty daggone special. Spectacular on the 100th anniversary of the founding of Claiborne Farms. A spectacular win for Blame. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Joe, that's it from here in the winner's circle. Well done, Jeremy, and well done to all the connections of Blame. All right, gentlemen, uh, the legacy of Zenyatta will be. She's the greatest female racehorse of all time. I would have to agree, and although she didn't win, she brought the show. And Blame undoubtedly will go on to win Horse of the Year. Undoubtedly will be Horse of the Year. Undoubtedly, you're going to hear people blaming Mike Smith because she was so far behind, and I don't think that would be accurate criticism. We'll have much more analysis of this thriller in the classic on Sports Center throughout the night and tomorrow morning. Coming up next, ESPN College Football Primetime. For our entire crew, I'm Joe Tessitore. Thank you for being with us for a thrilling Breeders' Cup Classic. Up next, Arkansas and South Carolina. Let's get it over to Brad Nessler. Brad, take it away.